will start with Ms. Sandalo from the Children's Law Center. Welcome. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman Wells. My name is Judith Sandalo. I'm the Executive Director of the Children's Law Center and a resident of the district. As you know, the Children's Law Center is the largest nonprofit legal services organization in the district and the only legal services organization devoted to a full spectrum of children's legal services. Every year we represent hundreds of children in the child welfare system and see firsthand the importance of protecting credit histories. I'm pleased to testify in strong support of the Foster Care Youth Identification Protection Amendment Act of 2009. Thank you for introducing it. The bill will require the Child and Family Services Agency to obtain credit reports on behalf of older youth in foster care. Ensuring a credit review prior to leaving foster care is an important step in improving the financial security of the hundreds of children and youth who will emancipate from foster care in the next few years. Identity theft is a common problem for foster children and youth across the country. Newsweek reported earlier this year that up to half of foster children may be victims of identity theft. But very few states have taken formal steps to address this problem. By passing this bill, the district will join leading states like California, which have enacted a law similar to the bill being considered by this committee. The value of this bill is best illustrated through one of our clients, Jonisha, a 20-year-old in foster care. Abused by her stepfather, neglected by her drug-addicted mother, and abandoned by her birth father, Jonisha has spent the last five years in foster care. She has finished high school, recently enrolled in Job Corps, and is preparing to emancipate from foster care in the coming months. CFSA called several meetings with Janisha to discuss her pending emancipation. At those meetings, her social worker and independent living program case manager discussed various issues she would have to confront when she turned 21, but nothing about her credit, even though she planned to apply for a credit card, lease an apartment, and she hoped eventually to buy a car. Her credit was only discussed when her Children's Law Center guardian ad litem, her court-appointed lawyer, insisted that CFSA um, assist her in obtaining a free credit report. When CFSA did help Janisha obtain a free credit report, an outstanding charge of more than $3,500 from 2002 was discovered. That is, seven years earlier, when Janisha was only 13 years old, someone had opened a public utility account in her name. As happens far too frequently, a relative or someone else who knew her name and social security number used that information to open an account and then never paid it. The good news is that once discovered, the situation was very easy to resolve. Children's Law Center contacted the creditor, explained that a 13-year-old could not have legally opened an account, and that Jonisha could not be held responsible. We documented Jonisha's age, and the creditor took the negative report off of Jonisha's credit history. The bad news is that it took our advocacy, the advocacy of a lawyer, to reach this result. If it was not for Jonisha's lawyer, no credit check would have occurred. Jonisha would have left foster care with a serious blemish on her credit report, which would have jeopardized her ability to rent an apartment, obtain a credit card, purchase a car, and obtain decent terms on any loan she might take out. She could have been induced to spend thousands of dollars that she can ill afford to lose, paying off a debt that was not hers. This bill will ensure that all youth like Jonisha receive the same benefit that she did. It empowers youth to address credit problems before they, act, before they are on their own. This small, no-cost step of obtaining a free credit report can make a significant dif difference in a youth's financial uh, ability. We do suggest three technical changes, which we believe will make the bill more effective, and I have attached to my written testimony the specific language. First, foster youth's attorneys should be informed of the result of their client's credit checks. As the successful resolution to Janisha's case demonstrates, children's lawyers can be effective advocates for victims of identity theft. Creditors will, be like, will likely be more responsive when lawyers contact them to resolve problems on behalf of their clients than when clients, especially children, call themselves. But lawyers can only help their clients resolve credit issues if they know the result of a client's credit check. Second, CFSA should request credit checks on behalf of foster children and youth on an annual basis. Credit theft is not simply a problem that occurs in a foster child's past. Identity theft can recur throughout a youth's stay in foster care and a clean credit report at age 16 does not mean that the youth will have a clean credit report at age 20. Federal law entitles all individuals to a free annual credit report. To address problems early and to prevent identity theft from creating lasting problems to a foster child's financial security, this bill should require that CFSA assist youth obtain the annual credit check to which they are entitled. Finally, some of the bill's terminology is problematic. The bill uses the term minor to refer to children 16 years of age and older. That definition, however, is in tension with an existing provision of the statute which defines a child in a neglect case to be under 18 years of age and a minor 
to be under 21 years of age. We encourage the committee to tweak the bill's language to avoid the unnecessary confusion. With these small changes, I urge you to favorably and swiftly mark up this legislation and bring it to the council for a vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Wells, for your leadership on this issue and for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much.